I want you to see the first key to receiving deliverance from demons and that is this submit to Jesus as your Lord it means to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Jesus says I am anointed by God to bring freedom but then he says the first thing he says I'm gonna bring a good tithing to the poor now we know this means also practically actually he brings good message to those who are in poverty but we know that what this means as well is Jesus brings the good news to those who are broken for those who are poor inside of their spirit the first key to experiencing the freedom from demonic oppression in your life I, I want you to notice what I did not say I did not say to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior because many of us do that freedom does not come when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior salvation does freedom comes when you submit not receive you submit yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ the Bible makes me to understand where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom the correct translation says this where the Spirit is Lord there is freedom devil does not respond to Jesus as an insurance card devil responds to authority demons respond to authority and when you have when you walk under authority of the Lordship of Jesus Christ Satan reacts toward that the problem with many of us is this is we receive Jesus as a spare tire and we pull him out when things get hard we receive Jesus as an insurance card and we pull him out when the police pull, pulls us over Jesus Christ is not just my Savior he is my Lord I want you to see the second thing in here is that we see he came to preach the good tidings and then he says he came to heal the brokenhearted see before he gets to the demon part he says about you need to establish the lordship who is the lord in your life number one number two is there needs to be the inner healing that happens and the inner healing happens only through one way is forgiveness forgive if you want to be free before you can be free you have to forgive whatever hurts and pains people caused you these pains can actually attract demons these things can attract demonic forces Bob Larson a Reverend Bob Larson who was in in, in uh, Portland this weekend by the way he sent greetings to our church and stuff he was when he was here in in our country in our in our city I'm sorry last year and I asked him something about this topic and he said Vlad everywhere I go outside of America he says the number one open door for demonic oppression in people's lives is occult he says within the western countries the number one open door for demonic oppression is abuse why because when wounds are neglected they become infected when you neglect the wounds and you say that time will heal it all see time doesn't heal time helps to heal bible didn't send the clock to bring healing jesus came to bring healing in book of acts there was a man named simon and he was a sorcerer he dabbled in witchcraft and he participated in all of that stuff and he got saved superficially he came and wanted to receive the power of god by paying money and apostle peter looked at him and said this he said you are poisoned with iniquity you're poisoned with bitterness and you are bound by iniquity poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity actually in Simon's life probably there has been some kind of an event that caused bitterness to build up in his heart and when he became poisoned with bitterness that opened the door to be bound by iniquity in almost every single place where there is a bondage to iniquity there is a poison of bitterness and if you want to lose the bondage you got to get rid of the poison and the poison is bitterness the poison is hate the poison is unforgiveness the poison is those things that we've allowed to foster in our heart and you may say i have the right to be bitter ha huh. satan has the right to hold on to you too the the secret number three to receiving deliverance is this is freedom and deliverance comes by revelation not just manifestation i want you guys to see this in isaiah 61 verse 1 it says that Jesus came to proclaim liberty to the captives. He, it didn't say Jesus came to deliver the captives. 
the way he delivers the captives is by proclaiming liberty into their life he proclaims that liberty see many times we reduce deliverance and freedom to manifestation instead of proclamation or instead of revelation you are free not when you shake and bake you are free when you receive prayer and you receive that knowing I am free what if you don't shake and bake you are free how do you receive your salvation you receive your salvation when you pray the prayer you place your trust in Jesus and you receive that knowing that I am saved if you don't cry you're still saved if you didn't fall you're still saved if you come from this sanctuary and you have doubts you're still saved even if you fall into sin you're still saved now you deal with your issues as a saved person not as a lost person a person who is delivered can still manifest but they should manifest as a free person because deliverance sooner or later no matter how many deliverances you go through until you come to the truth that Jesus proclaims liberty to the captives he this doesn't give liberty he proclaims it proclaim liberty to the captives and I want you to see the last thing that it says here an opening of the prison to those who are bound number four the part of your life the devil does not have control over is more powerful than the part he controls the part of your life the devil doesn't have control over is more powerful than the part he does i want you to see this in here freedom comes by we submit to the Lordship of Jesus. Freedom comes by we release any hurt and unforgiveness. Freedom comes by revelation. Jesus proclaims liberty. But in here he also, the Bible says, not only he proclaims liberty to the captives, he also opens the prison doors. That means there's two types of bondages. There's the one where you are a prisoner and there's one where you are a slave. If you're a slave, he sends a word. If you're a prisoner, he unlocks the key. He unlocks the prison. He comes and unlocks the prison but I want you to see what he does not do. He does not drag you out of your prison. He opens the prison door. That means it's a generational curse. But the prison door means you have a demonic influence in your life. Jesus comes in and through the prayer line, Jesus comes in maybe through uh, somebody prays with you. Maybe you meet with somebody, you go to a conference, whatever the scenario or the case or maybe at home and Jesus opens the door like an angel did to Peter when Peter was in prison the angel came in and the bible says the door was open the guards were asleep the chains fell off and angel hits peter and says this arise put on some clothes and follow me quickly this is what i find out about people about us jesus comes opens the door shines his light and we get very happy very happy the service is over and next thing that happens is the next day those guards that are asleep when you are awakened will wake up you have a very short moment of time to leave the prison what is a prison it's your mindset it's your habits and it's your friends he opens the prison door but he doesn't drag you out he asks you arise put on some clothes and follow me quickly that means if you got prayed for, you got about an hour or two before those guards that Jesus set you free from wake up. And this is what could happen. In a day, they can be hanged and you can be promoted. But if you chill here, if you hang out here, if you don't walk out from your prison, a wrong mindset, wrong habit and a wrong set of friends. If you don't walk out from your prison, the guards will wake up and next day there will be reinforcements. But if you wake up and you say, Jesus, I'm going to follow you quickly. Oh, I don't want to make radical changes right now. I don't want to delete numbers. I don't want to get rid of some friendships. I don't want to change. I don't want to dump all the weed. I don't want to throw away all the drinking. I don't want to cancel this and that. Why? I don't want to get too hasty. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Well, this is one problem. If you don't do it quickly, these homies and cronies that you've been connected to for years, they're going to wake up. If you want to be free, you have to walk out from the prison of a wrong mindset. 
walk out from the prison of wrong habits that means starting right now when the Lord touches you you make a decision I throw away the cigarette and once and for all starting right now you saying, you know what that's it I'm deleting that that source that through which I fall into pornography starting right now you saying, you know what this friend has doing this been doing this and been doing this and I've been falling into this temptation you know what I walk away from that and when you walk away from that the Holy Spirit will lead you into a new season So when I was in elementary school, um, I used to smoke weed and drink. It's probably as young as, uh, you know, fourth grade. And uh, so, you know, I was doing drugs and drinking as a young kid. And um, let's see, when I, in high school, when I got to high school, is where I really started going off the deep end. And I got busted for a quarter million dollar steroid bust um, my senior year of high school. And I was looking at facing 15 years of 15 years in prison and a $250,000 fine and from there it created a lot of uh, a fight between my parents because they turned me in and so I moved out on my own with my girlfriend at the time and I ended up, uh, her dad was a huge drug dealer here in town when I was just a young kid and uh, he got me into growing weed and I, grew, I made $3,000 of my first little crop and I liked that fast money and so I started um, doing 99 plants per room on hundreds of felony and so I always kind of my life uh, just pushed everything to the limit as, as hard and fast as I could go and uh, that 99 plant room got me about thirty thousand dollars on my first crop and so from there um, I started packing out rooms five houses in Spokane um, for seven years 99 plants room just people would pay me money to come set up shop and I'd start you know, take care of it and get rid of it and uh, so also during that time I was dealing rock cocaine on the lower South Hill Altamont area here in Spokane which is a super hardcore area of the city and um, you know my life was just a wreck and I was very suicidal during that time too like I said I had all the money in the world but I was miserable empty hopeless I tried suicide nine times Everything from 200 hits of speed to 48 sleep pills on one occasion, overdoses, I'm just miserable. Tried to kill myself in my garage one day, I'm just asphyxiating myself, everything. So I was just hopeless, miserable, but all I knew um, was just who I hung out with and stuff, just that drug scene and stuff. And, um, yeah, that was my life, just paranoid, tormented, always looking out my rear view mirror, um, my mini blinds, just always on the run, and I just hated life. I had no hope, no peace. I was in my living room floor one night all by myself. And I was hopeless, miserable, paranoid. Like I said, I'd been always living my life, looking out my mini blinds, my rear view mirror, just growing weed in Spokane and all over and doing a lot of drug dealing and pushing, you know, I pushed millions of dollars worth of cocaine and meth and I ended up, my own addiction was uh, um, you know, close to $4,000 a month. I hated that lifestyle and I couldn't quit. I didn't know any. I didn't know any different. Um, so fast forward, I was uh, in my living room floor one night, all by myself, just hating life, realizing I'm a cokehead, you know, and all the drugs I was doing, and I didn't know a way out. So I went and grabbed my assault rifle, loaded it up, threw it to my head, just all by myself, and I was gonna check out. This was my tenth suicide attempt. Um, I was gonna end my life that night, and. Um, just uh, kind of called out on Jesus I figured I would just take a chance to see if God was for real and uh, as that guns to my head man finger on the trigger I just said Jesus if you're for real you got to show yourself to me otherwise I'm out of here and when I called out on that name that night all by myself in my living room floor he showed up powerfully it was the most powerful experience I've ever had in my life and uh, when the Holy Spirit came he instantly gave me peace and joy two things that all the money, all the toys could never, could never buy, like, you know what I mean? Just that encounter with Jesus. And um, I felt all the weight of the world just lift. All that torment, paranoia, paranoia just instantly left my life. And I was a new baby right there on my uh, living room floor. And um, that decision cost me everything. Um, man, I lost all my friends. I didn't have anybody. I didn't have one person to stick by my side with that decision. But I knew what happened that night on my living room floor all by myself. When Jesus came into my life and he changed me, I 
never touched or used another drug ever since that day. Jesus saved my life and uh, he met me right where I was at in life, just in a bad place. And uh, he changed my life. And um, I'm a youth pastor now at Calvary Spokane and I, um, I do a skate church ministry in Indoor State Park, uh, reaching the skaters and youth. We do a lot of huge outreaches and we'll go back into the most hardcore areas in Spokane, the West Central, Hilliard, downtown, do a lot of street ministry and outreaches where we lift high the name Jesus and uh, and we pump out our testimonies and win souls. And so God's on the move in Spokane. And so everything that Satan meant to take my life out with, God forges a weapon to go right back in and take enemy's territory. My name is Jeff Ross, and this is my testimony.